Andrew Tate. The name alone creates strong reactions. Millions of young men are obsessed with a guy who tells them to work out, make money and dominate everything. And everyone's arguing about whether he's toxic or truthful. But here's what nobody's discussing. Why his message hijacks certain brains so effectively. So today we're diving into the neuroscience of why certain messages become addictive to young male brains. I'll show you the confidence paradox that makes controversial figures magnetic the tribal psychology that's being exploited. And there's this fascinating thing about rejection sensitivity that explains everything. Plus why arguing about him completely misses the point. So last week, this father in my program goes, Gregory, my 16 year old son watches Andrew Tate videos constantly. I don't get it. What's happening in his brain? Look, whether you love him or hate him isn't the point. The point is understanding why certain messages resonate so powerfully with specific brains at specific times. So here's what's happening neurologically. Research from UC Berkeley in 2019 shows that confident behavior, even when it's completely unjustified, triggers follow responses in our brains. We're wired to follow confidence over competence. Now think about it. Someone says, uh, maybe this might work, I, I think. Versus someone who says, this will work, guarantee. Your brain gravitates towards certainty, even if it's false certainty. Now, young male brains between 15 and 25 are in what neuroscientists call an identity formation window. The prefrontal cortex isn't fully developed yet, but the amygdala, the, the emotion center, is in overdrive. They're desperately seeking identity models. And here's what's genius about the Tate approach. It offers absolute certainty in a world full of confusion. This is what a man is. This is what success looks like. No debate. See, a 2020 study from Northwestern found that adolescent brains show heightened activation in reward centers when exposed to definitive statements versus nuanced ones. Complexity feels weak. Simplicity feels strong. Your confused teenage brain doesn't want uh, it depends or it's complicated. It wants this is the answer. And that certainty? it's neurologically addictive. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. Research from Columbia University shows that young men with high rejection sensitivity, you know, the fear of being rejected by women or society, well, they show increased susceptibility to authoritarian messaging. Think about who's most drawn to this content. It's not the quarterback dating the cheerleader. It's a guy who feels invisible, you know, rejected, unsuccessful with women. And what's the message? It's not your fault. Society is broken. Women are programmed wrong. The system is against you. The whole system's rigged. This is psychological gold for a brain experiencing rejection. See, when you're in emotional pain from rejection, your brain desperately seeks two things, an explanation that preserves self-esteem and a path to reversal. Tate's message provides both. You're not the problem, you're the victim. But follow my rules and you'll dominate. 2021 study from NYU found that social rejection activates the same brain regions as physical pain. The interior cingulate cortex lights up like you've been physically hurt. And when someone offers a painkiller for that, even a toxic one. Your brain wants it. The message essentially says, your pain is real, your anger is justified, and here's how to never feel this way again. Look, brains evolved in small tribes where hierarchy and belonging were everything. Research from Oxford in 2018 shows that young men's brains show heightened activity in tribal affiliation regions during identity formation. And here's what's brilliant about the Tate phenomenon. It creates instant tribe membership. You're either in the matrix or you're awake. You're either high value or, or you're a beta. This binary thinking is crack for a developing brain. No nuance, no complexity, just us versus them. And suddenly lonely young men have a, a tribe. They have insider language, shared enemies, a collective identity. So Stanford research from 2022 found that parasocial relationships, so, you know, one-sided relationship with uh, media figures, they activate the same neural pathways as real friendships in isolated individuals. These young men literally feel like Tate is their friend, their mentor, their tribal leader. And when the world attacks him, all that just strengthens the bond. See, they're trying to silence the truth. We're the resistance. External opposition actually strengthens internal cohesion. It's basic tribal psychology. So here's the final piece. The lifestyle porn. Cars, jets, women, money. Research from MIT in 2020 shows that aspirational content triggers massive dopamine release in young male brains, especially those experiencing economic anxiety. But here's what's actually happening. It's not about the cars. It's about the possibility. If this guy can do it, 
Maybe I can too. Young men today face the worst economic prospects in generations. Housing costs, student debt, wage stagnation, traditional paths to success feel impossible. Then someone shows up saying, forget traditional paths, here's the hack. The brain doesn't fact check in aspirational mode, it just sees unsuccessful present state, successful future state. This person claims to know the path. So that's enough for dopamine release. And every video watched, every clip shared reinforces the neural pathway. The brain starts believing that consuming this content is taking action towards success. It feels like progress even when nothing changes. Now here's why arguing about Tate completely misses the point. Telling someone their hero is toxic doesn't work because you're not addressing the underlying need the hero feels. The young men drawn to this content aren't really looking for Tate. They're looking for confidence, direction, belonging and, and hope. Attack the messenger and you just strengthen the message. Instead of arguing about the person, address the need. Why does a young man feel so lost that absolute certainty from a stranger feels like salvation? What's missing that makes toxic tribalism feel like home? Because here's the truth. The next Tate is already being created. Different phase, same psychology. Until we address why young male brains are so susceptible to this formula, we're just playing whack-a-mole with influences. So I'm curious, what do you think young men are actually searching for when they fall into these influence patterns? Is it belonging, purpose, simple answers? Drop your thoughts below, I read everything and this conversation matters. Now if you want to understand more about how influence works on the brain, and how to build healthy confidence without toxic ideology. We dive deep into this at brainacademy.com. Brain out. Sharp.